Hi there, welcome to the daily video blog. It's Tuesday, uh, the second of these of the week. Um, and I've got another guest appearance, this time from uh, Councillor Mark Wynne. And he's going to be talking to you about the Bedgrove Residents Association support group that they set up there uh, and the way they've been helping in particular uh, residents in the area who are in the shielded group. Now shielded basically means they have a medical condition that means they shouldn't be venturing out. Um, and therefore we've been working very closely right across the entire county geography uh, to support groups like that. And Mark's been one of the leading lights in that in the Aylesbury area. Now he was due to be joined by another colleague, Margaret. Uh, Margaret's one of the shielded group herself uh, and she's been helping out by effectively running a telephone service whereby she rings up people in similar situations to herself. It's called the Happy Chatters um, and she rings up people regularly and it's just if you like a telephone lifeline for people who otherwise obviously are stuck at home during this period. So she's been a real inspiration uh, and Mark will be talking a little bit about the work that um, uh, the group that she's part of will be doing today. But just before I pass over to Mark, uh, what I want to do again is just a couple of headlines. First of all, yesterday the government updated its guidance in terms of how you might detect some of the coronavirus symptoms. Uh, you might have seen this on television or radio, but it's quite important to recognise that they've now added a different category or a new category to the symptoms. Uh, and that is the, the change in the sense of smell or taste that people can experience. It's called asnosmia. Yeah, it sounds almost like a Russian name, but actually it means that you've lost that, that sense of taste and smell that most of us have got. Uh, anyone who's got that, and particularly if they've also got a continuous cough, really needs to self-isolate. And now if you've got that, self-isolate for at least seven days just to see whether the symptoms then develop. Um, or if you're with somebody else in the house, particularly if they're in a shielded group, make sure you isolate for at least 14 days. So that's updated guidance from the government. Really important you pay attention to that. If you're likely to have asnosmia, please, please, please observe the isolation rules. Uh, and the other thing I just wanted to say, uh, and it links into what Mark's going to be talking about now, uh, is to remember to contact the, uh, the council's online community directory. We run, as part of the Buckinghamshire Council website, uh, a community directory. It's a list of all the local groups and the businesses that are supporting people right across the county. It's a fantastic database, really, of people near you. Who can support you with maybe food needs or whatever. Uh, it's being added to all the time. So if you went into it maybe three or four weeks ago, didn't see what you wanted, go back to it today. It's being updated. You may well find out just what you're looking for there. So please remember that support as well. So having said that, uh, it's my great pleasure now to hand over to Mark Wynne, who's going to be talking to you about the Bedgrove Residents Association initiative uh, and what they're doing in terms of supporting people, particularly in the shielded group, uh, in the local Bedgrove area. Over to you, Mark. Thank you, Martin. Uh, I'm uh, Councillor Mark Wynne. I'm a councillor for Aylesbury East on Buckinghamshire Council. Uh, I'm also chairman of the newly formed Bedgrove Volunteers. And the Bedgrove Volunteers were formed at the early stages of this uh, pandemic crisis. I went round our local shopping centre in Bedgrove, which is one of the parts of the areas I represent. And I saw lots of people that were at risk, they were either older or they had obvious health conditions, which meant they shouldn't really have been out, they should have been in self-isolation. But the reason they were able to do that was because uh, there were a lot, obviously there were a lot of selfish people out there that had stripped uh, our shelves bare and taken everything, including for some reason all the toilet roll which we all will recall. So they felt they had no choice to be out there, but to be honest, they were putting themselves at risk. So uh, what I did is I put out a call for some volunteers. Uh, we've got a Bedgrove Facebook, a residence Facebook page, and I put out a call for volunteers on there. And I was astounded, we actually ended up with 190 volunteers to help out. And what we did is we set up a, a telephone number. So there's a helpline number. We uh, put out 2,700 leaflets to all the residents in the area, telling them that we had this service and uh, what, what we could offer. And uh, basically what it is, is uh, to go and do the shopping for them and to go and collect their prescriptions. And it was so successful in the early days when there was lots of queues outside the chemist. Our, our volunteers were standing in the queue, seeing people and saying, you need to phone the volunteers, you shouldn't really be out and giving them the number. 
and they actually phoned up and then as they're in the queue they were able to get the medicines for them which is brilliant but as we went further into the the, the pandemic and people were, were self-isolating one of the big worries is the fact that people were going to get depressed uh, were going to get really down as a result of uh, the pandemic so we also set up a bedgrove happy chatters line who can befriend people that are self-isolating give them a, a ring and uh, have a chat, a chat with them. Um, we've also had help from Buckinghamshire Council. We've got a £2,000 grant from Buckinghamshire Council that helps us to, that helps us to pay for the telephone line, for the rental on that. It helps us to, uh, we've got some PPE, some a big stock of hand sanitizer to keep our volunteers safe and to keep the people that we're helping safe. And, um, also it helps us to set up a shopping fund. So obviously it's a big risk in using money and exchanging money. So what we've done is that the volunteer can get the shopping, can be reimbursed for the shopping from the fund, and then we can invoice the person that we're helping. And that can all obviously all be done via email. So there's no exchange of cash. So we've limited risks there. But the major thing that as it's all brought out is a brilliant community spirit and what we need is a, a legacy of that going forward once all this is finished we want that as the legacy we want to not remember the the selfish people that went out and stripped the shelves we want to remember the community spirit where people went out and helped each other um, another really brilliant thing that that has happened is as we've uh, gone and helped people and spoken to them We've found that uh, they, may have been, uh, they may have fallen through the cracks in terms of, of help. And that we've highlighted several safeguarding cases, which we've reported to officers. And officers have been brilliant in actually reacting to those and taking those forward to help people. So really, what I, I wanted to, to say is pay tribute to how a community like Bedgrove has come together. And this has been happening up and down Buckinghamshire. We, we all know that, which is absolutely brilliant to see but what we'd like to see is a legacy of this volunteering going forward to the legacy of, sort of trying to help people and that's why I'd, I'd like people to remember from the the pandemic as, as well as obviously the, the sad things that happen but how good it is to see this community spirit come forward thanks a lot mark and thanks to you and the initiative you've led there um, and to people like Margaret, who I mentioned at the beginning, who, even though they're isolated themselves, can play a really valuable role in supporting people in similar positions. So well done there. Just before I sign off, I mean, yesterday I said I wanted some feedback on the, uh, the daily video blog. Uh, thanks for those of you who have already provided it. We are looking at reformatting this. It's intended really to be an opportunity to do two things. It's meant to give you the latest update on how we're responding um, to the coronavirus, some of the headline news. Uh, and it's also meant to be a little bit of an insight into some of the activity that's going on across the entire council geography. Um, some, if you like, hopefully inspirational videos showing you how everyone's rallying around to support each other. Uh, but we're looking at reformatting this, perhaps changing the frequency of this, because we feel as if we're entering a new phase now, we're moving sort of out of lockdown uh, as an absolute for everybody into a period when there's more focus on economic recovery. Uh, so we need to change the emphasis of this and change some of the frequency. So. Uh, we'll update you as the week goes on. We'll carry on doing a video blog this week uh, and then we'll decide uh, what's the right frequency and messaging going forward. So thanks everybody for the feedback. Keep providing it and we'll obviously take your views into account. So as always, stay safe, stay well and I'll see you tomorrow.